you need to introduce SGRP with higher graphical features. But for setting up a PBR material in SGRP, you have to design metallic, ambient occlusion, detailed mask, and smoothness maps into RGBA channels, respectively. This results in lower build size and resources cost. Unfortunately, Unity does not have a built in texture channel packer. Because of that, you will have to do it in an external program like Photoshop, or buy an asset that will do it for you, or create your own tool inside Unity. Luckily, this is very easy to be done. And now I start by creating the editor folder inside Unity Asset folder. Then I create my C -sharp script and call it Texture Packer. Our script should be using Unity Editor and System.io libraries. So I just add them at the top of our script. Instead of mana behavior, the script must inherit from editor window. Then I write function to open our texture packer window. So I write public static void show window get window texture packer in here we specify the name of the window I go ahead by creating a menu item to call the show window function now getting back to unity we can open our window under window tools texture channel packer as you can see nothing interesting is happening so I just took our window near inspector now let's go for the main part the mask map has four channels they are metallic ambient occlusion detail mask and smoothness. As a result, we need 4 texture 2D variables, plus a mask map that will be our final texture, a public string variable for the name of output texture with a default value of untitled, 2 int variables for width and height of the texture, and a bool called inverse smoothness, in case that you have a roughness map instead of smoothness. We go ahead by specifying the ungui function for drawing fields in our window. I write a function named showTextUI that returns a texture to the object. Inside the function, create an object field using editor GUI layout class. Our function should be taking two parameters. One calls field name that will be the text that shows up for our input texture in the editor window we created. And the second one will be our input texture field inside Unity. As default, it has a value of null. Now we pass our field name to the first parameter of object field function and our texture 2D variable to the second parameter. Then I write type of texture 2D to specify the type of input object in the editor. The last parameter is to allow referencing scene objects or not. In our case, I just set it to false. Right now, inside the ungui function, we type in metallic is equal to the show text GUI, and the first argument will be our texture input field name that is simply just metallic. For the second argument, we pass in the actual metallic texture to the variable. The process is exactly the same for the other three textures, except for the mask map. We don't need it to be as an input inside the editor window. We create an editor GUI layout text field for the name of the result texture. I forgot that the name is used in Unity libraries itself, so I just rename it to texture name. Now we have two int fields for the width and height of our texture, following an editor GUI layout toggle for our inverse smoothness pool. We create a button by typing GUI layout.button and inside the parentheses we write the text of the button and we check it if in an if statement if it has been clicked or not. Then I call the pack texture method to start the process of creating the mask map. Inside the pack texture function, I write mask map is equal to new texture 2D and I pass the width and height as the arguments of the constructor. At the next line, I set the pixels of the mask map, but because that it takes a color array as input, I create another function called color array. In the color array function, I specify a color array variable called seal with a length of width times height. Now I iterate through the array in a for loop. The process is really simple. I have to check if the input texture is not null. After that I am sure it was not null, I set the red channel value equal to the metallic.getPixel. The first one is the remainder of j to the width that gives us the column, and the second one is j divided by width which gives us a row number. You can get any of the r, g or b channel because they have the same value. But remember not to get the alpha channel because it always has a value of 1. Now in the case our input is null, 
In the else statement, we set the channel value to 1. Later, this will be multiplied by the value in unity HDRP material. So if you set it to 0, you cannot change it later. We go ahead by doing the same thing for the other maps, but remember to use the green channel for ambient occlusion, blue for detail mask and alpha for smoothness. But in the case of the smoothness map, we check if inverse smoothness is, not, is true or not. If it's true, we deduct its value from 1 to inverse its value. At the end, I return the CL variable. For the end part, we have to save our texture. Now I need a body array called text that is equal to mask.encode to png. I create a variable of type file stream and set it to new file stream. The first parameter is the location where we want to save our png. I go to the top of, our, top of the script and define a string property called path. In the get accessor, I define a new string variable. Then I check each of the input textures if they are not null. If one of them is not null, then the path will be the asset database that get path. And inside the parenthesis, I cast the texture to object. But because it gives us the path including the name of the texture, we have to remove it to prevent it from being replaced by our mask. Then I return that string. Go ahead and do it for all of, all of the four textures by copying this copy. Returning back to the file stream, writing path plus name plus the png. For the second and third arguments, set file mode open or create and file access to read write. Then continue by creating a binary writer variable equal to new binary writer of stream. In a for loop, iterate through text array and pass it to the binary writer write method. At the end, close both the stream and write variables. Then import the texture by giving its path and set import asset options to force update. Finish the function by refreshing the asset database. In the ingui method, create a button called clear that sets everything to its default value. Now inside Unity, I create a cube and a material. I assign the material's base map and normal map, then I have to create its mass map. So I open texture packer window and assign ambient occlusion and roughness maps. I change the name and set the width and height. Be aware to set the width and height exactly to the same size of the texture. Cause if you set it lower, a part of the texture gets cut. As long as I have a roughness map, I set inverse smoothness to true. Unfortunately, I made a mistake so I have to go back to Visual Studio and change name to texture. And now, if I hit pack textures, it works and here is our mask map. I'll assign it to our material and you can see the difference. Congratulations, you have created your own texture channel packer inside Unity. Now you can go ahead and pack any textures you want. If you have any questions, ask them in the comments. I would be happy to answer you. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to my channel for more content. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.